Welcome to the first ever Big Brain, sponsored by Cash App. What we are doing, we are looking for companies, young companies, ideas, people to invest in, to give the barstool bump, hopefully make everybody wildly rich. What I did, I brought two of my friends, John Taffer, King of Nightlife, Bar Rescue, world famous entrepreneur. You've only generated $75,000 in revenue. You've been at it for years. I'd say your day came and went. And my friend, Mike Rapoli, started a little company called Body Armor, Vitamin Water, Billionaire. You're trying to be everything to everybody, and yeah. when you do that, you become nothing to nobody. We're looking for young people, like myself when I was growing up, to help take to the next level, see where it goes, first time ever, the big brain, let's go. You're just, it, this is like a punching bag, you just keep coming back, I, it's, it's over. It serves no purpose, guys, and the beer, once it's in it, sucks. You diluted yourself by two and a half percent more, and all of a sudden you got a $10 million valuation. Congratulations, you just made $6 million in 10 minutes. We are here in the Cash App Green Room, where all of the contestants for today's big brain competition are sitting, waiting, and preparing themselves to launch their ideas on the world. And in fact, we have our first contestant of the day right here, right now. Why don't you step on up, pal? How's it going? Hey, Zach. How's it going? <laughs> I'm fantastic. What's your name, pal? Matt. Matt, what are you going to be pitching today? I'm pitching my company, Chups Fruit Ketchups. Ooh, fruit ketchups. That sounds weird and delicious. It is weird and it is delicious. Are you about to go in there and get some money or what? Yeah, man. I'm excited to get a brain today. This is going to be awesome. To get a brain? Yeah. It's about time, man. You deserve one. Thanks, bud. Why don't you get in there and show them what you're made of? Let's go. Hello. Welcome. Hi. Thank you for having me in the cranium today. My name is Matt Wallace, and my journey started five years ago with a simple cherry ketchup recipe experiment that I did at home. This recipe was really successful and led my wife Corey and I to develop our company, Chup's Fruit Ketchup. What we do is uh, we take fruits and blend vinegar and spices with them instead of tomatoes. Uh, historically, ketchup was not made just with tomatoes. It was made with all sorts of ingredients. Um, and then about 150 years ago, Mr. Hines revolutionized the ketchup market and he made it just the tomato variety and it is primed for reinvention. How much money are you looking for and for what? We're looking for $75,000 in exchange for 20% equity in our company. We really need just two things. We need more inventory and we need some exposure to get this idea out to consumers. What are your sales now? Our sales? You've been doing this for five years, right? Yeah, five years. So we've done uh, almost $180,000 total. This um, year? 2018? No. Total? Total, yes. What were sales in 18? Uh, they were low. 12000 So it looks like your sales are going the other way, though. We grew. So you did, you did 165000 or so this year? No, no, no. no. 165000 first total. four years, and last year, 12 years. Yes. So to me, it already looks like it's a five-year concept, and unfortunately, your sales are going the other way. I don't get the concept. The concept is ketchup. People are sick of ketchup, basically, or ketchup's not growing, so it's just an alternative for fries and chicken fingers. Ketchup has this wonderful history that no one knows about. Um, so we make cherry ketchup, uh, blueberry, spicy pineapple. But if no one knows about it, how does it serve you well? You're saying that you need to educate the marketplace. Yes. Uh, that, that's a very expensive process to educate a market. This is still our side hustle to speak to our sales. We've done all of this, you know, on the side. The side hustle thing? Yeah. If you believe in the concept that much, what has prevented you from being basically all in on it, saying, you know what, this yeah. is gonna be my full-time hustle and I'm gonna swim or sink with this. So we wanted a proof of concept. We have, we have fans, we have people who order from us regularly. We wanted to make sure that, that the market was right for this. We didn't want to go all in with no one knowing about it and then fail. You know, we wanted to, to prove that we have a viable concept. Yeah, I mean, Dave, what I, what I would say to you is, after five years, last year's sales were $12,000. I mean, proof of concept, $12,000 after five years, I think that's your proof. It's probably a nice little niche brand. I think you, you know, uh, make it on the weekends, you and your wife enjoy it, but I think right now, five years, I, I can't advise investing in a company that does 12K in sales after the fifth year. Right. So, we had our first son uh, last summer. We purposefully, uh, to me, actually, that's a bad thing, uh, not having kids. I mean, everyone has kids, I don't, but it, it weirdly, it's like, well, now you have a newborn. So it's, this, this company is going to be 
150% of your time, you got a new kid rolling around. So I tend to, I tend to go with Mike. And my biggest thing, honestly, is I don't see the excuse why I didn't already do it full time. I'm gonna suggest that you hurt your brand. But I think the brand is in a weaker spot than it was. I, I would recommend to pass on this. Okay. I appreciate you coming in. Uh, I'm going to listen to my friends here and, and pass on it. Last point, and this is just a bit of advice for you. When you're standing here saying that you have a brand that nobody knows about, a product that isn't known, but you're asking for money for inventory. When you get your inventory, you're still going to have a product that people don't know. You need to focus on how to build a brand, not how to build inventory. Good luck, exactly buddy. Right, Good luck. Appreciate it. Thank you. Matt, thanks. All in, Matt. Thanks, guys. Welcome to the recovery room, my friend. Thank you. What happened out there? Man, you know, I went into the cranium, you know, looking for a deal. I'm just not sure we were on the same wavelength, you know? It's just, uh, concept was a little abstract. The big thing that you guys I, talked about, though, in the in the thing, it's like, you, if you haven't gone all in yet. Five years, and now yeah. you have a fucking kid? Nah, yeah. you can't do it. So. Hi, my name is John Mikulek. My company's Game Day Hospitality. Uh, and we are asking for an $85,000 investment for 15% of our company. Did you know that according to Tailgater Magazine, the tailgating industry is worth up to $35 billion a year? Um, I started my first company when I was 16. I've been an entrepreneur most of my life. I started out building cornhole boards out of my garage, turned that into a tailgating retail site and a man cave resell site over the last seven and a half years. Um, started, in that, started in that space, built it over the last about seven years. Um, created uh, sorry, created, created the different brands to, to, to sell in the space. We started Game Day Hospitality about two and a half years ago um, with the idea. Um, I'm from Buffalo, New York originally, so the best tailgating city in America. We came up with the idea of doing an all-inclusive tailgate for Bills games right across the street from the stadium. So, Looks like you didn't pass out oh, from not breathing. They put the wrong presentation in. Well, that's not good, right? No. It's not good at all. This was the wrong. <laughs> well, wing it, buddy. You got. Sorry, to... sorry. So we host pregame events all around the country. So we create, we take over venues and parking lots as close to the stadium as possible, so we can guarantee Dave doesn't get dragged out by his feet by Roger Goodell. So when you say take over, what does that mean? Uh, so we rent out venues and we produce everything. It's all inclusive, all you can eat and drink, um, TV, uh, all you can eat and drink, TVs everywhere, games. What's um, your name? Again? John. John, I, I, I'm just. I'm getting stuck here. I mean, yeah. Sorry, I got thrown off. What? No, it's, it's okay. What is the point of difference? There's 5,000 companies that do this. There's not you five. Can, I mean, you well, do, there's a lot. There's, there's a lot. There's a few you companies could do this out at a concert. There. You could do this at a at any venue. You could. I could do that with the the Jets at a stadium. I mean, what, 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 what's so get, getting to the point? There are a few companies here and there around the country that are doing it, but it's completely different what's, things. But what's I, the I, difference I, with the event? Yeah. What's the difference? Uh, we target fans. We, we create a VIP experience for fans that can't, that for the average fan, that's different than the $300 experience the NFL sells for three hours to sit in the corner of a convention center. We actually create an experience and get fans out from all over. Like give an example of what you're talking about. Get the example. So we host, here's some of the events we've hosted in the past. Um, what we, do you mean host? You just, you, you, you have a tailgate at the, you haven't yeah. hosted it's the not a, It's not a tail, it's not a tail, it's a ticketed event. So we sell all you can eat tickets. It's so a, you go to so a market. You the Super Bowl? So the Super Bowl this year, we hosted, we have a venue in Atlanta that we've used for about eight events so far over the last few years, including the national championship. The We've done the SEC championship twice. We do these events. We have a venue there that's a wedding venue that hates hosting events on sporting event days because parking's $80, nobody wants to go to a wedding reception. We rent out the venue, we created our ticket software, our website that gets to fans. And, and what was it? What I, was the event? What, what was it's the event? an all-inclusive pregame event, so it's, it's, yeah, but it's like an indoor But there's 7,000 of those. So what was it? How, how, much, how much did the ticket cost? What did you get? <laughs> what was How'd you sell them? How'd you sell them? I was gonna, sorry. Give me the Super Bowl. Just tell me, I, I buy a ticket for the Super Bowl. How much does it cost? What do I get? Yeah, so we had an all-inclusive event. It's two, it was $220. Um, that's our most expensive event we've ever done. The Super Bowl is an exception exception because- You gotta tell me what the Super Bowl event was. Yeah, I'm, I'm telling you. It was nothing. $220. It was, it was not nothing. $220, all-inclusive. That's the most expensive event we've ever done. So our venue in Atlanta came to us two weeks what before. What was it? When I walked it's in, all what is it? Event. It's a you big pregame party. You all-inclusive. Who it, it was? Well, what was it? Why, Why is it, it special? special? You, have, yeah. you have a live DJ. 
Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, it, it's an awesome. We've seen event. events with DJs before. It's, it's, okay. it's, it's been done. Twenty dollars gets me what? A DJ. You get, you get food, drinks, means food, and food, drink. drinks, beer, wine, oh, liquor. Yeah, yeah. How many people? That was VIP only. I do that always, and I pay for it. No one has to so pay. You, so you, you get, get an open bar. bar. You get an so open, get an open bar. bar. What else? We we do this in situations and events where it's hard to go into. A, just walk into a bar in Atlanta. You couldn't walk into a bar in Atlanta for the yeah. Super Bowl because they're all rented out. They're that was dead wrong. I was in Atlanta. I walked into a bar that was across the street from the stadium five minutes before the game. Yeah. I was there. Yeah. I got I, dragged out. Trust me, I was there. I know you were there. So what do you mean you couldn't walk into a bar? You could. I did. Okay. I, if, so, sorry, I wasn't ready for the questions. I was trying well, to get. You, you, you gotta be ready. For if, if you get to the, you have to be if you let me get through the presentation, you didn't no, tell no, us no, what no, was that you, Super Bowl. We're asking you questions. You gotta answer them. All I know John, is we got an open bar. John, That's all I no, know. John, John, John. Okay. I just want to get. I, if we if, if we would have run through, we, you would have gotten to the John, part where we're John. unique from everywhere else. I'm about John. to get to there. We look, John. We look for concepts. Yeah. We look for brands. Yeah. We look for people. Yep. You, you're, you're like panicking here. Like this is not, we're not asking you tough Sorry. questions. We asked All we questions. asked was a simple question. So if you can't handle the simple questions, what happens when you build a million dollar company or a billion dollar company, yeah. it gets a lot tougher than this, trust me. Oh, this is easy. So, so th these okay. are simple, we're asking you very simple. What do we get for $220? For $220, you get all your food, drinks, the, the pregame How is that the different VIP. from any other event that I would go in the Super Bowl? And I might pay, what, 210? I'm just curious. What um, around the Super Bowl, the cheap around the, the cheapest events around that are about five, seven, 500 to $700. We okay, go so after we, the so it's cheaper. So you, we, come, we go after so the, the average premise fan. of your organization is that other venues are full, so I'm going to come to you. We, our goal is to find 1% of the people going to the game. If you have 70,000 people going to a stadium, we try to find 1%. We yeah. get 700 people. We try to create the best possible experience where everybody feels like they're tailored to. Can I ask you though, like yeah. we do events. Barstool yeah. does events. We did events at the Super Bowl. We Body Armor does events. Why, why, yeah. If I just want to throw an event at the Super Bowl, why do I need you? You, you could do something different. You don't necessarily need. We well, yours is very different. It's an open bar and it costs a ticket. <laughs> it's got a DJ. That's not all we. That's not all we. That's not all we do. This isn't going great. I, I, I know. It all started out with this. Not. But the truth is, with this idea, if we were going to do this and we do a lot of it, it wouldn't be called game day hospitality. It'd be called barstool hospitality. From us producing these events the last two out. years. Yeah. I, I don't. Know, I don't out. know what it. I'm not out. even to the actual point that. Well, that's. Matter. Matter. I mean, we we invent. Well, there's no reason to get to the point. There's no it, interest. Here's the point that we're getting to. Oh, we okay. we invented the game day <laughs> dream suite last year with our partner Seating Solutions. They do seating for 26 NFL stadiums. We created a suite. This is our first prototype unit we use with Dell. Look, I'm a hospitality guy to rent a venue, set up some bars, put up some TVs. It's just not rocket science. It's, it's not. It's all being, about the you, lists and being able to sell it. And but that's he what we has the eyes to sell it. Yes. And we can do it. We've done you, it. You could do it, yes. But we've been able to Obviously, something we're doing is working because we've actually many built. Good, you may be very sure. That's great. But it's like it we doesn't help do him. It without you. We're trying to be the go-to network for people that want that game. But if experience. I, but if I bought, if if we invest or did anything, it would be nuts not to change the name from Game Day Hospitality to Barstool Hospitality. We have GameDayHospitality.com. We rank very high on everything. Obviously, SEO wise, we've we've eliminated everything. We I'll trademark give you the term. You're just this is like a punching bag. You just keep coming back. I, it's I, over. I, it's I over. believe in this. I mean, John, thank you. Thanks, John. Oh, sorry. Right, Good luck. Thanks. The guy melted. Muttering. <laughs> Open bar. Oh, man. We asked him. That was tough. I'm here with Game Day Hospitality in the Body Armor Recovery Room. Sir, how do you think it went in there? Didn't go well. Didn't go well. I was kind of thrown off from the start, they put the wrong presentation in, so I didn't actually- Who's get, they, who's they? Um, we sent it into the production, the fonts and everything weren't showing up, they asked us to resend The one. fonts? Uh, the fonts weren't showing up, and so the president- what kind of fonts were you looking for? Basically, a lot of our stuff wasn't showing up, so we sent the correct one in. Was it a Times New Roman, or what are we talking about? Basically, the whole presentation didn't show up, that threw me off from the start, I never actually got through the start, and they started ripping apart the idea before they even knew what was it was. Was it the fonts that were not coming up, or the, the presentation wasn't coming up? It's so we know we had TVs yeah. in an open bar for $220. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. he, he could definitely be a pro, I mean, those companies work, it's just... Mm -hmm. it, 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 no, listen, but when he says, we do a great pregame experience, what the fuck is that? You seem like you were carrying maybe a little bit of nervous energy into the pitch. I saw this uh, thing that Kanye West was doing with Tony Robbins, and Tony Robbins basically told Kanye West, you just got to yell as loud as you can. Kind of scream, let's let it all out. Yeah, so go ahead. Ah! I don't know. You got to let it loose, dude. Ah! Come on, like dude, that. let it loose. <laughs> let it loose. Ah! Ah! 
Ah! Ah! Is that part don't know. That's gotta be the guy that was, we just threw out. The guy was just I'm not sure that Tony Robbins trick is what it what it's all cracked up to be. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I don't. It might not even work. Hello. Hey, hey, brains. My name is Reed. I currently live in Dallas, Texas, right now, and I'm asking for thirty thousand dollars in exchange for fifteen percent of the neck shaver. Quick story for you guys. So while I was going to school at LSU, my friends and I would help trim or shave the back of our necks with just like a regular razor. So one of these. I'm sure you've seen that. Mm -hmm. Now, what would happen is if friends or family or roommates weren't around, you'd be forced to shave the back of your neck by yourself with this thing. This thing. It's very difficult to do that. So I thought there had to be a better way. There had to be a better way for guys to shave the back of our own necks without any frustration. So what I did was I went to the student incubator at LSU. I found some engineers, we came up with a couple designs, and we created the neck shaver. It's the first ever, and I mean ever, neck shaving device. You simply take the device, you swipe down on the back of your neck, giving yourself a nice clean and cut shape. That's it. So, Brains, I'm asking you to come join me so we can introduce to the world everybody's next best friend. Can I see it work? Sure. We're gonna do a little demonstration for you guys. Did he use it? Did you already use it? The guy looks like he's already got. Well, well he's got a little bit of a little bit yeah, of fuzz on the his before. neck. Yeah, that's the before. Why is the back of his neck red? He put a uh, hot towel on there before the. Ah. Uh, so. Okay. So usually we'd have a mirror, but I'm gonna be the mirror here. And then all you do is swipe down on the back of your neck, giving yourself a nice, clean cut so shape. So you rotate it. Uh, yeah. And, and then you just buy the razor blades. I have a question. Exactly. Sure. Yeah, how do you so, get it straight? Well, how do you get it straight on the back, right? <laughs> so so it's lined up straight already as it is, but you would, I mean, you would use a mirror the same. same All right, so here's my yeah. question. Sure. Here's the million dollar question. I used to cut my own hair. I cut my own hair forever. I stopped doing it. I still cut the back of my neck. There is just a razor, like an uh, electric razor. Z -z -z done, did it today. Yeah. But you can't see if it's a straight line in the back. But well, that could be crooked too. That, you that said could be use a mirror. Well, no, I mean, you would just use a mirror the same way you would use a mirror for the electric shaver. Exactly. Right. Bang. But again, Except you're- Except I don't have to keep buying razors. I plug it in, I'm good to go. Yeah, but it, it's not going to give yourself that straight line, though, in the back. This will. If you can, if you line, once this you line it up- are, yeah. This guy's hands are a mess. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So how many uh, blades are on there? I, I, there's, there's five blades on there. So what that does is it saves me five strokes. Rather than stroking it, five times, exactly. I'm going to stroke one. So it saves me five strokes, in essence. But if it's crooked, yeah. you have it an still electric can be razor. Yeah. How does a barber do it, electric razor? But the, will the barber see the- if, but one, if I have a mirror like this, I just do it yeah. and do it. Uh, yeah, well, watching yeah, but, that demonstration gave me anxiety, like this guy was going to cut oh, himself yeah. up. It's I wasn't just, worried at all. I was having anxiety, and, and I felt mm -hmm. bad for him. It's so just regular cartridges. I, I, I can't see, I mean, I can't see a, I can't see anything. It's just reusing a regular cartridge. Yeah, That's and, and the chances of someone getting it straight the first time, I, it's, 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 it's I, I like I like the aggressiveness. I think it's one of the worst. It's innovative. It's just you think that's innovative? The, well, you, you, you save five strokes. I, mean, I like you. I I I don't think the idea. Well, I'm, gonna give, I'm gonna give him cash app money. You gotta get cash app. I don't think you should put it towards that razor. I no, think you should no, regroup no, 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 no. and come up with something else. I'll give you a, I'll give you a five grand. I, it's just so bad, and I feel bad saying it's bad. That's the worst <laughs> idea I've ever seen. I will give you five grand. You gotta get this cash tag because I do cut my own neck, and it's easy. And you have a razor, and anybody can do it. So that, also, that looks like a martian. Your thing. biggest fear when you shave is cutting, cutting yourself. yourself. Yeah, that's that. And that fear is times five yeah, for cutting yeah. yourself. And expensive. Or I'd rather do the five and strokes. Expensive. Yes, it's right. it's it's gonna save you time from going to the barber, save you money but from going to the barber. Razor, you yeah. can do it. Yeah. But you, Seconds. you take can't, the, it's take, hard to do take, that. Take no, the five k. Yes, you might take it back. You might take it back. Yeah, five k. Five k. You did cash tag app. This idea, burn it. Yeah, please. Burn it. Five k. Burn it. Yeah. It just stinks. You come up the next one. Thank you. All right. Five grand. All right. All right, All right. there you go. Take care, cool. guys. Good Thanks. Luck. Would you think that the neck shaver has to stop at necks? No. I mean, you know, people were giving me ideas for their legs, um, arms, you know, all, all what sorts. What else? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. That Who looks cares? like a weapon. It could be a great yeah, joint thing. Yeah, that looks scary.
And the guy's got bolts in his head. So. <laughs> I know that. That's literally one of the worst ideas I've ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> we are here with our next contestant for Big Brain. Sir, how big is your brain? It's feeling pretty good right now. This is something that could change your life. This is a, a process that could really, uh, it, it could change the trajectory of your business even. Are you prepared to have your core shaken like that in the big brain competition? Absolutely, you know, you got, just gotta go in and perform, but you know all about that, you're a, you're a surgeon. <laughs> Brother, surgeon. I got the watch to prove it, don't forget it. But I appreciate you kissing the ring and letting the people know how big my brain is, and uh, that makes me recognize a good big brain on you, pal. Get on in there, all right? He's smart. This is a good, smart brain on him. Hey guys, uh, my name is Brett Harrison. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Roomy. We make furniture, rent that furniture to college kids, and then sell them a brand new version when they graduate. So I'm sure you've heard of all the bed in a box and couch in a box companies that are popping up everywhere. They have two main problems. So the first is that they can't get you to try their bed or their couch versus their competitors. And the second is that they don't know when you need to buy. So they have to spend exorbitantly on marketing, hoping at that magic moment when you decide to finally throw out your ratty mattress or couch, you'll remember them. We solve both of these problems by getting college students to pay us to try our beds. And then when they graduate, that is the only time in their life you can be pretty certain that they're not only going to need to buy a bed, but furnish an entire apartment. So that lets us sell Casper quality mattresses made of the same factories of the same foam for half the price. And whereas the bed and box companies are spending hundreds of dollars on customer acquisition, our customer acquisition cost is zero. We rented at around 14 schools last year. We're on track to be renting at between 30 and 50, but we're going to be selling at more than 100. We did a beta test where we sold to graduating seniors last year. We sent out a few thousand cold emails. We sold out almost instantly. Our mattress manufacturer, which is one of the largest in the country, said they've never seen a startup grow this quickly. So that's a little bit about Rumi. We're going to be launching to 1.5 million contacts, proprietary database of contacts that we've built this spring. And so that's a little bit about us. Bar Sales, valuation. Yeah, so uh, we did $650,000 from June to September of last year. Um, obviously, it's a really cyclical business right now. Did you take October to January off? Or? No, no, we, so we start recruiting for the next cycle. So that's when it's kind of nice it's based because- based on the academic calendar. Yeah, it's yeah, based on the academic calendar. calendar. And so that gives us time to start just recruiting more people. And that's where we built that 1.5 million contact database. We've been recruiting people at every school. So when, when they rent from you, help yeah. me understand the process. Yeah, totally. So I sign a rental contract with yeah. you. I get my rental furniture. Yeah. In that contract, am I committing to buy the furniture when I graduate? No. So you're just renting for the year, two years, three years. And so there are two kind of different use cases. So Erica's not here, but she went to Colby. She would, for all four years at Colby, where 98% of kids live on campus, she's going to get this bed every year with this terrible mattress that we've all seen. Absolute piece of junk. And she has to sleep on this for four years. And so we come in and she can either sleep on that or she can rent from us. We operate at Colby, we do a decent percent of the student body there, and they get a real mattress that's not only more comfortable, but it's bigger. And we have all of our proprietary furniture that makes the frame bigger on each side, and then we bring in a real mattress. So if you're replacing the bed, you're talking about someone taking out their dorm bed, right? Exactly. Part of the problem we've run into is like, what do I do with this thing? Yep. And that's why we have a, we're patenting a new mattress that actually goes around it. And so it makes not only more comfortable, but it makes it bigger. And that's why we've gotten a lot better response from schools, because we live and die by working with our schools. We need to be approved on every campus where we're going into the dorms. And so since we came up with this new product, the campuses are really getting behind us. Princeton University is one of our main investors. We have contracts with Brown University, and we're start I've only been doing this full time for a year. And now we're really starting to get a lot of buy-in from the so, the so what valuation? You didn't tell us valuation. Yeah, yeah. Get, so getting us all excited and then there's no valuation. <laughs> yeah. so. so we've done a convertible note. Um, we did our convertible note last April. Okay. When Princeton came to us, they said, if you raise non-familial up to 100K, we'll match it. So we did $100,000 on our convertible note then, $4 million cap, 15% discount. And I would love to have you guys in at the same terms. But so bar $4 million valuation. Four million convertible note, yeah. Four million cap on the convertible note. When you par say you're partners with Princeton, is that is that a, a participation relationship for the university? Explain that to me. Yeah, so Princeton invested in us. Um, they, 
I was working Why? with is someone. That what you went to is, that, is that what you No, went to I went to Dartmouth. Um, I was working with someone who went to Princeton. They have an alumni fund there where they invest in you know recent grads, and so that's how they invested in us. But at Brown University, for instance, we get preferential access to the dorms. So we walk in. You're you're a Brown student. You come in your sophomore year. You open your dorm room. This bed is already waiting for you, and next year this bed's going to be waiting for you with your decor already done up, your sheets already on the bed, your TV waiting for you, your whole room can be set up. No one else can do that. And so once we get into school, it's really a natural monopoly. It's a brilliant business model. So in essence, when the students graduate, yeah. you have a big prospect list. And Absolutely. In theory, they're connected to that mattress. They love that mattress. They've slept on it for yeah. years. So you, you, you're assuming that based upon a relationship they have with you yeah. and the quality of the product, yeah. that they'll just assume it and buy a permanent Absol furniture package from you when you're done. Absolutely. And the, and, and the pitch there is we're giving them a better bed? A better, more comfortable bed. So Barstool, of course, you know, has a huge college audience. Yeah, uh, so through the Vice Roy program vehicle is how I heard about this. So there's a value that Barstool brings to this separate of money. Absolutely. Okay, so $4 million valuation, uh, and how much, are you looking for $200,000 from Dave? Are you looking for $100,000 from Dave? I'd be happy to do $100,000, $200,000, $50,000, $50, but again, I'm more interested in the advisory. So if Dave said okay. he'd give you $1. Yeah. But he'd give you his platform. Yeah. In a way that would explode your brand. Yeah. What would you give him? I, if it's vesting over time to make sure that I can test out yeah. to make sure that Dave's good Let's on his word. Let's say it's a three-year vesting program. I'd be, I'd be happy to give him 5%, which would make him the third largest shareholder in the company. Okay, so you got 5% for just leveraging your platform. You haven't written a dollar yet. So the value, you, which makes sense, you're looking, which is why we're here. I mean, yeah. trying to match. You're looking for just the marketing muscle. Yeah, and yeah. absolutely, and you, you, no, 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 but, but you, you, you'll get equity. And, right. and, and if you want to put in the 200,000, he can convert the 200,000. Then it's 7.5%. So Dave, if you did nothing except form this relationship with him and take 5% equity in his company, based upon the valuation of his company, you now have $200,000 in value of stock in his entity today, based right. upon and a 5%. we have to have some sort of agreement on what we're gonna do marketing-wise yeah, for correct. it. Correct, and, and now, so, so this is a reverse transaction in that you're not providing any capital to him, and based upon what he just said, if you provide him $200,000, you are only getting 7.5%. You got five for free. I wouldn't put up the 200 for 2.5%. Two I would take the five, do the platform with him. He got $200,000 value, you own 5% of his company, you're one of the biggest shareholders. He's sharp. I disagree with you, and I actually would put money into this. Um, I like, you know, I look for concept, good concept. Thank I look you. for a brand, roomy, cool name, good brand. Thank you. And I look for people. I mean, Brett seems like a smart guy. He's got his shit together. Listen, I would advise you for $200,000, 7.5% equity, real equity, that's what you paid for, and 7.5% over two, three years. You can give him 2.5% a year. He'll fulfill his obligation. If he doesn't, then he doesn't get the other 5% equity. Yeah, we just, it, the $200,000 needs to be part of the convertible note. Just Why? So I, Why? You because run, you run, you go to your board. Who's your board? Me. Okay, there you go. So stop right there. No, you stop right there. I've run boards before on my board. You can make that decision. You don't, don't sales us. You know, don't, don't this just This is an sell. exceptional opportunity. You can, you it's can more make of a, this. It's more of just a question, but won't, if then Dave invests at a valuation, Do you th won't the day Dave invests, your company goes from $4 million to being worth $10 million. Absolutely. Done. Then stop right there. You did a great job. You, you diluted yourself by 2.5% more. That's fine. And all of a sudden, you got a $10 million valuation. Congratulations. You just made $6 million in 10 minutes. Easy deal to do. The fact of the matter is... All your other it. investors are going to be thrilled of the deal that you just made. Thrilled. Everybody's valuation just went up 20%, 30%. More. $8 million. Double the valuation. I am ecstatic. Good. I just wanted to... That's so yes or no? Was, we we got to make a decision. Yes, yes absolutely. All right. Yes. Deal. Done deal. deal. First one. Go meet your second investor. The only, the only issue <laughs> we'd run into would be is if your colleges are like, fuck Barstool and we don't want them. Yeah. But we'll cross that. We'll cross we'll that that's crazy. the marketing agreement. Really nice to meet oh, you. Thank you. Like it. Thank you. Awesome, guys. Thank Good. you guys both right. so First much. Deal. It was really nice Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Really nice meeting you. Thank you so much. We owe him 200 grand. I think that was a good one. Me too. It's a good concept. shop. He's smart. The only thing so understand, he came in here to sell you five percent for two hundred thousand. Yeah. You end up with fifteen percent for two hundred thousand. Yeah. 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 That was it. We take it very nicely. <laughs> what was like the one question that they didn't ask that you were glad that they didn't ask because it would have it would have hurt your whole business? Um, how many people are working for the company? It's just me. That's fine though, right? Yeah, I mean it's fine, but. Uh, it, I, I think they probably thought there were more people involved. It sounded, it sounded like it was a bigger operation. I kind of listened to the pitch. It sounded like it was a big deal. Yeah, it's just me. And I have an awesome intern right now from Dartmouth. I mean, they're outside of college. You can oh, sell yeah. everything. It's a no-brainer once you have their info. Once you're in. Yeah. 
Once that, you put them in the right family, you could sell them And then you really work a relationship with the university, so you're a preferred vendor for the university. Yeah, yeah. I, I would actually be silent because He's the universities sp- aren't going to want yeah, Barstool. Yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. You're right. Yeah, and um, it's a good linkage yeah. for the brand. It's a yeah. good linkage for yeah. the brand. Yeah.